without ever having to f fire a single round and uh, complete it just by talking to everybody if your speech is and personality is high enough it's my guess how that has to work because they have a really high speech person okay so you can if you have a really high speech you can talk about your way out of most of the encounters out in the wasteland and personality checks obviously so speech personality and attention I think would need that and probably survival so when you're on the world map and traveling you can with speech you can bypass all encounters with humans by talking your way out of it and survival I think is what you need to bypass bypass all encounters with animals Oh, there's also luck checks. If your luck is high enough, it's always a show to watch. Okay, so there's like multiple different ways to play this game. So you can have multiple different playthroughs. I'm kind of interested to see how it does the whole, you've done the game, how well the wasteland turned out because of your choices. Let's get back to the game and make one of those choices, actually. Oh, hello. I'm thinking about the election here. Pretty sad that father had to resign, but I think he wasn't really against it himself. What are your choices? What are your chances of winning, though? The same as Grankins, but that's up to the villagers to decide. It's truth in your words. Uh, wait, um, what do you think? Will I be able to win the election? Sure, I have no doubts about it. Yeah, because we're actually... Technically, I'm rigging the freaking election right now. So, sure, I have no doubts about it, so... At the heart of it, I am the most corrupt person here. I think you have some nice chances, but I can't say any more. Honestly, I don't know. I think you'll probably lose, although I can be sneaky. You want my opinion? No, you won't wait. Sure, I have no doubts about it. I think you have some nice chances, but I can't say more. Sure, I have no doubts about it. The girl giggles and looks at the floor, shy of her outburst. Thank you. Even if you don't really think so, thank you still. You're welcome. Well, I gotta go. At least I was honest to her. Didn't tell her why. <laughs> you know, hey, Scott Smith, how goes he today? So, we have the Fisher. Let's see if he's out here. Fishing. Yep, he sure is. Oh, okay, so at the end you do get a montage of what the effect of your decisions had on the wasteland. That's cool. I like that. I missed that. I missed that in Fallout. Uh, oh, damn, he's got a knife. Is he not happy about life? Okay, save. A tall fisherman spits on the ground and looks around suspiciously. He throws you an unkindly glare glance upon seeing you. Let's see, alright, nothing here. Can I ask you a few questions? How's life? Here, nothing special. I come to this place to fish and that's that. Life is alright given the circumstances. There's fish to catch, mushrooms and berries to pick sometimes. Even get bread and meat. The important thing is not to join any collective. So, got fed up with all the people? The fisherman turns away and gives his surroundings a harsh glance. Finally, he chuckles mirthlessly and turns back to you. Don't know how to put it, it's just that I believe that when people come together, they turn into a herd, and a herd is only good for slaughter. If you catch my drift, it's not my style, therefore I'm a loner. That sounds like intellect, that sounds like the solipism thing Lennon always criticized. The fisherman nods respectfully. I see you are no simpleton, while I don't actually think that the whole world exists only inside my consciousness, it doesn't change things, I don't like to cooperate with other people. So, after such an intelligent conversation, may I ask you other questions? The man nods silently. Okay. Tell me, how's life? Tell me about yourself. I live alone. I fish. I set snares. Bow to nobody. If you're interested in pre-war life, I was nobody, really. A simple taxi driver. When I learned about the first bombs falling, I quietly gathered my stuff and went into the woods. My wife declined to join me, and the first typhus epidemic got her. Sad to hear. Can I ask you more? What can you tell me of the village? There is nothing to tell, really. I don't spend much time with the locals. I don't like their head. The comrade Ko El Kovalev, the old man who believes himself to be some sort of tsar or general, 
secretary, totally lost all grip on reality. His flock is molested daily by bandits and other folk, and all he does is blink. An interesting opinion. Okay, I see. I better go. Okay. Oh, no. The fisherman tried to get into the election, but was told no. My bad. Okay, so old man Simon. In, okay, I think one of the old men is in this hut right here. Yep. Old man Simeon is scratching his hefty beard. When he sees you, he squints a little and then smiles as wide as toothless grin at you. Oh, shunny, all those elections made me nauseous. I'm too old for this. Can you tell me why you don't want to vote? What's there to tell? I don't like cranking and I pity our little Katya too much. Quite the burden looking out for the whole village. I know, okay, let's see. Oh, I'm not going to go with the strength option. I can break your neck? No, that's mean. Okay, so you can hear him singing. Okay, in the background. I know that we must have this election, so why won't you vote? Please, old man, everyone needs to vote. What would make you change your ways? The old man laughs under his breath, takes off his hat, and starts cleaning it calmly in a theatrical gesture. Leave it be, Shani. I need nothing. It's just that I never voted my whole life, and I don't know whether I want to start now. I mean, I don't like Grankin at all, and I don't want to put Kasia, Katya into this meat grinder of politics. She's too young. Okay, they're still going to elect one of them. Do your part, too. So you don't like Grankin. Doesn't that make him a bad politician? Katya may be, bung, may be young, but she is not naive. She knows her stuff. Be sure of that. Fine, fine. We'll see how you sing once the two guys from the factory pay you a visit. Maybe these hundred ruples? No. Let's try to convince them with words and reason. Katya may be young, but she is not naive. She knows her stuff. Be sure of that. You think so? I remember myself when I was her age. Although, come to think, I was pretty smart when I was her age. I don't know that she really wants to become the head of the village. Uh... Okay, I can use my personality. I think she is more than capable of leading Otra de Noye. Or I can use my intellect, which... I mean, if she didn't want that, why would she even run for the position? The old man Simon puts his hat back on and nods. You're right. I'm just thinking of Katya as if she's a little baby girl. You know what? I'll vote. I'll do it. Never voted before, but I'll try it out. That's the right choice. Okay. All right. So, who do we got to talk to? Jan. Old. So, where's Jan? It's fine. Are you Jan? Nope. Before you stand, Ahmed. Okay. Katya must win the election. Didn't she? Jan was one of the guards, I think. He said. I had such a horrible memory. Here we go. Yon the guard is looking into the horizon. Sometimes he turns to the village, quiet to down before the vote. When he sees you, he gives you a nod. Hey there, heard of the election? I'll probably pass. Let's talk about you not voting, okay? What's there to talk about? I have the right not to vote, so I won't. Okay, the strength option is basically beat his ass into doing it. You have that right, but why use it? Maybe you'd rather vote? Maybe th these 100 ruples? Nope. Or Otra de Noye. Having a coward for a guard must be hard. Speechcraft. Is this how a true laborer thinks, comrade? You betray the collective and spit into Lennon's mummified face with your descent into self-imposed non-voter state. I'm not sure about the Russian culture, so I'm not sure if that's something they believe in or work with you have that right but why use it maybe you rather vote I'm, and this is kind of like insulting the gentleman too and insulting Lennon too you have that right but why use it maybe you rather vote oh so th this is very Soviet
so. The guard lifts a browned out, but it seems like your words have somewhat touched him. You're speaking just like a Soviet agitator from the pre-war times. Come on, I know it's what the collective wants, but I don't want to mess with this election. It just feels wrong somehow. Well, what can I do but switching my persuasion strategy? Well, at least you said what you don't want to vote, but how is the election wrong? Tell me. There we go. The guard spits on the ground and clicks his tongue. I don't like that we only have two people involved. I like Katya, but she's not experienced in politics, and I really... Really dislike Grankin. He is a boring, thieving little man, so both options are kind of redundant. I'll tell you a big secret, buddy. There are no ideal candidates in democracy ever. That is so true. Any choice is better than no choice at all. When nobody knows who's the leader, chaos erupts. The girl is actually bright and smart. She'll be like a mother to you folks. How is he boring? He's a great guy with a lot of charisma and experience. I'm going to go with number one. So, what should I do? Vote for some random person? That won't do. Better to have an official leader than nothing at all. Speak, Crash. If you won't elect a leader, some bandit will name himself the new head of the village, and that's going to be that. What will you do then? I mean, literally. that's That happens a lot in these post-apocalyptic games. Some dude strolls into the town, starts shooting everybody, says, I'm in charge. Jan rubs his temples. Hell, that's true. I said, fine, you talked me into it. I'll vote. Good luck during the election. I'm glad you. I opened your eyes. Alright. So, I think we got everybody here to either vote or to vote for Katya without having to use force, try to use reason, or in his case, appeal to his despicable nature. Because I failed my speech check. Ivan Ovinovich looks around with curiosity. As he notices you, he waves at you amicably. How can I help you? Everything is ready. I've completed all of the tasks. Enough time was wasted. Alright, now we should start doing the most important. Although, there's a small matter I need settled first. Oh, what now? Well, it's hard for me to ask, but you see, we need at least 30 stacks of paper. For all the paperwork you know, paper doesn't come cheap nowadays. Are you serious? Where will I get so much paper? Man looks at you very nervously at first, but then bursts into laughter. His bodyguard gives you a crooked smile as well. They're most likely laughing at your expense. Oh my, you should have seen your face. Calm down. We got everything we need already. I'm not some novice and things like that. <laughs> I was like thinking, where the hell? <laughs> I'm going to have to go spend the rest of the stream getting paper for this election. That was... You got me on that one. Touche, Ivan. Touche. Well done. It's always to have a good laugh. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure my face looked like... I was like, what the hell? 30 pieces of paper? Oh, well, what do you know? Never thought it would turn out to be such a joker. <laughs> ah, yes, quite funny. Have you calmed down already? Uh, well, you were wrong. This work isn't really fun, so I like to mix things up from time to time. I mean, that's yeah, good. Fine jokes aside, we need to start the show. Ivan Ivanovich slaps his bodyguard on the shoulder and he slowly exits. Wait for the participants participants to arrive. The villagers are slowly gathering at the building entrance. You hear them talking and whispering to each other. People are trying to look into the building. They push each other for the opportunity to see inside. Ivan Ivanovich's bodyguard even has to scare some of the people away with a short wooden club. Yeah, democracy and bureaucracy. Ivan Ovinovich, meanwhile, prepares some pieces of paper and pencil, which he later spreads among the villagers. Even though the, villager, the village is not too big, the voting process takes two whole hours, during which some of the people start political arguments, which have nothing to do with the votes. A pig barges into the voting area, and some fisherman from another village is caught trying to vote for himself. Finally, everyone leaves. Ivan Ivanovich looks at the stack of voting papers in his hand and puts them on a shelf. Well, it doesn't take a math genius to know the results, so who won? The man looks at the results again, whispers something almost without moving his lips, and finally speaks up. They're going to... I wonder if they're going to do it so Grant can win. And just all that work I did was for nothing. The youth won, by which I mean 
the charming Kaya. Interesting. Never thought this crowd wanted to change so badly. Perhaps the old patriarch's ways weren't to the people's liking after all. That Katya, as I found out recently, is a pretty smart girl. Although smarts aren't everything a social worker needs. Without them, it would be even harder for her to settle in this new role. Good luck to her, I guess. Good luck and quick learning. Ah, the fascinating world of striving democracy. What now? Now, nothing. The deed is done and I'm off to KRZ again. It was nice meeting you. Say hi to Dan for me, and if one day you find yourself walking past the Chamber of Commerce in KRZ, don't be shy. Come in and ask for Ivan Ivanovich. We're colleagues now, after all. I'll be sure to do that. Good luck on your way, Ivan. The official nods to you, gathers his things, waits a bit at the door, and finally leaves. A minute later, you hear his car's engines rev up. Ivan Ivanovich leaves. Otra de noye. Well, that's that. Cool. And you got 100 EXP in my log. Uh, updated. And where is Katya now? As you walk into the tavern, you notice the former head of Otra de Noye, Kovalev, who sits at one of the tables. He empties a glass from time to time and strokes his mustache. Upon seeing you, he invites you over with a gesture. Care to keep me company? There's so little to do nowadays. Sure thing, I'd like to rest after a journey. What's going on with you? How's life? Need any help around here? Yeah, let's let's see if his barter changed. Nope. Let's chat him up with it. Maxi Tinker, uh, the people that just Ivan Ivanovich, is he part of the KRZ? Are they bad guys? Uh, well, they're working with former so they're a a big city in the territory, KRZ, which is down south where Ivan came from. They legitimized some bandits into local law enforcement who wanted to hold new elections in KRZ. So there's been times throughout history, and I can't name anything specific right off the top of my head to give as an example. Maybe somebody in chat who's a history buff will be able to, where... At one time, people were considered bandits. Things turned in a different direction. They were considered, well, hell, American Revolution, if, depending if you're English or American. You know, we were bandits and hoodlums and terrorists and all that stuff when we kicked the British out all them hundreds of years ago. The burning one? Yeah, the KRZ is kind of neutral. They're trying to keep the peace. They're trying to bring civilization and uh, prosperity back to the region, stability. I was able to be in a position where I can hopefully bring that stability. I tried to play it so the stability that's brought back to the region. Yeah, I'm trying to bring stability, help them bring stability back to the region by having people talk to each other and understand, you know, the old ways may not work so well now because that was the old ways when the world worked different now the world's a little different so let's you know we gotta not be jerks to each other we gotta be able to work together and maybe you need some new fresh blood that's willing to look at things differently because this is the life that they know and live you know you know, it's much easier. It, you have different viewpoints when you live in a society that has running water, food, electricity. You go down to the corner store, get all your stuff. You don't have mutants trying to kill you constantly. You know, slavers roaming, you know, the countryside, you know, picking off women and children. You know, life is a lot of anarchy. Some people decide to go with the anarchy. And I kind of want to help bring stability back to the air. So that's kind of like how I'm playing it. So I'm kind of thinking KRZ, you know, may have done some things that weren't right to begin with but now they're doing they're trying they figured it out that that was a bad idea so they're trying to move in a more progressive direction to help bring stability and safety to the area as long as they ain't doing it by brute force and i feel that my character interjecting themselves in certain key decisions will help it becoming uh from being brute force and painful for everybody involved because you know if you're the band you know bandits turn law enforcement nobody trusts you you'll never get anywhere so i was able to convince the doctors to actually heal one of the bandits that was you know extracting payment 
from a local town, but the bandits were actually fighting off slavers that wanted to come in and enslave the whole damn town. So, but the townsfolks didn't know that, and I never got the opportunity to tell them, you know, the guys that you call bandits that come by and get food and money from you were dumbasses and didn't explain, well, hey, we need some support to keep slavers from coming in here and turning your whole town into a slave outpost. Maxi Tinker, I'm Russian and I see how the whole city and KRZ are corrupt. Maybe it's only from my perspective, but I'm tired of all the bureaucratic stuff. Boy, that's, they already took five ruples from me as a bribe. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to change the system that, uh, that's in this game, but I'm trying to play my character so at least the influence I leave will hopefully... It's corrupt. I could soften it. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, once you're done with the game and your character gets to a certain point, you know, the story stops. And I'm not sure. We'll have some after story epilogue and see what that says. And hopefully maybe that will tell us whether or not our decisions were good. So that's kind of cool. At the end of the game, you can see whether or not you helped the corruption get worse or actually made people's lives better. You know, because the more worse that corruption gets, the more worse everybody's life gets, except for the few that are at the top benefiting from that corruption. Sure thing, I'd like to rest after my journey. What's going on with you? How's life? Need any help around here? So Comrade Kovalev thinks something over and then starts talking in a quiet voice. You know what I miss a lot? I miss good old Moscovich model car. My blue little Moscovich, you know? Before this Ivan Ivanovich visited us, I didn't even think it was still possible to get a drivable car in our world, but it seems there is room for miracles even in the wasteland. Ooh. Talking about cars. Listen on. I was thinking, maybe you can help me out. You look like a capable person. Maybe you saw a car in your travels? I'd take a car in any state of disrepair. My hands still remember the tools I used to fix it up my old bolt bucket. The village will sure be glad to get a car, a working car. Yes, I do know about a working car. The old man looks at you with hope in his eye. I saw a car, several condition, at Dan's factory. It looks good, but I doubt it's working. How about it? Kovalev looks rather hopeful. To fight his worries, he drinks a whole glass of alcohol. These are great news. Now you just have to get it. Now you just have to get it here, and I will use my skills to fix it. We'll get it fixed. We'll paint it. Such a shame. There are, there's not a lot of roads left, but still. Uh, how will I get it here? It's lacking wheels. I doubt you have the power to push it all the way. You can ask the caravan people. They have their own cars, and it's easy to meet them in the waste. It won't be cheap, but you can always haggle. Good idea, comrade. I will now look for some truck caravans. And we already have, Sticks already told us to find truck caravans or get a better chance of finding them. We go hang out around the roads on the world map now next to KRZ. Good idea, comrade. I will now look for some truck caravans. So that worked out. Okay, she now over here. And, in, in, and another thing. I noticed that there's more guards around here now. Like there's a guard right over here. And he was from the factory. So now that things have worked out in KRZ and Otra Dunoye, and Dan and his bandits are all kind of working together, they have more protection, supplies, and an influence over hopefully the people's life in a positive way, in a healthy way, hopefully going into the future. Because we didn't have to beat nobody or anything like that to get people to actually be happy about the decisions that they made. We, met, we used reason. But, of course, you know, you're always going to have that corruption you got to deal with. Gaia is completely immersed in paperwork. She lifts her gaze slowly and nods you, Abe, not really sure of what's going on. What do you got to barter? Nothing? Nope, nothing. Ah, hey, and I'm here. She shows you the documents with a powerless smile, working and working all day long. I came here to congratulate you on your victory. 
Thank you very much. The situation makes the girl blush a bit, and she again lowers her gaze to the scattered papers. Can we talk about the village rumors and stuff like that? Listen, can we maybe talk in a more private setting, drink some tea, shoot some shit, you know? Okay, that looks like having a relationship with her. Here's why I'm here. Could you possibly lend me some money from the village funds? Can we talk about the village, the rumors, and stuff like that? About the village? Fine. That would be a good topic to check my knowledge of the place. As a leader, I must know every nook and cranny by now. Is it hard to be a boss around these parts? I'm checking to see if she winds up with a quest for us to go do something. Katya quietly sighs. It's not easy for sure. I always fear mistakes. That, Not that I doubt myself, really, but I fear that when I finally make a mistake, I won't recognize it. That's why I'm rereading every paper I have here before I put it away. Sounds hard. Another question. What can you tell me about Otra Denoye now that you're the boss? I s I'll say that it only looks calm, but it sure is not. You can't imagine how much goes on here, really. Old people always double check whether I got what type of funeral they want. Karina's asked me about the infrastructure, possibly without knowing the meaning of the word. The woman sure likes to test her leader. Good. The burning one? Yes, I did talk to the former head, and he told me about how I can help him fix up a car, and maybe he will give me the car as a present for bringing back some old memories because of him working with his hands. I used to work on cars, too. It's a fun job, even though a bit painful at times. You hold on there, Katya. Yeah, another question. Okay. What is the hardest thing in leadership? The hardest... Cat yeah, Chuck is understanding dad's handwriting. Comrade Mikoyan is better and he's a medic. <laughs> yes, good handwriting is pretty important. Another question. Mm, heard any interesting rumors? Our old people always tell me of a man that, v that visits our village from time to time along with his pet pig. Sure, he's pretty strange, but they are literally scared of him. They say he tells them things, things that make them fear the night. They asked me to ask Yan to chase the old man away from our village, but I doubt... Such measures are needed, really. Hmm. I see. Let me ask you something else. All right. Cool. Uh. Okay. So I'm not here to hit her up for a good time. She is a very attractive young lady, but she's got things she needs to do, and I have my mission to Adam. It's more important. Alrighty, so do you have new loot for me nowadays? No, you do not. Damn it. Alright. That's it? Okay, cool. So now we gotta report to old Lieutenant Dan how well we did things. Then we have to find a truck caravan. And thank God I've been hoarding so damn much money because I have a feeling it's gonna be a lot. But hopefully, with our speech, which with my handy dandy fedora is now 140 we're going to have no problem convincing anybody we come across to assist us oh it's just a flirt thing oh okay I accidentally thought I was going to really talk to this nurse about books and you know whatnot. turned out Talking about books was 